It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Minnesota Vikings. Next on Madden Football. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season. Last year's offensive rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud. And he's coming off of a truly remarkable rookie season where he quieted a lot of his doubters in a most emphatic fashion. Remember, going into the draft, many thought he was the number two quarterback coming out of college. He proved quickly he was a top quarterback going into the NFL. One of the best rookie seasons by a quarterback in recent memory. And what's scary about it, he's not even close to reaching his ceiling. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards on the gain. A great start for this offense. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. Stroud out of the gun here. There's the former Viking, Stephon Diggs. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 23 yards, the final tally. And with C.J. Stroud on a rookie deal, the Texans decide to go all in this offseason, picking up perennial Pro Bowl receiver Stephon Diggs. And now with him in the mix, Houston hopes he can be the piece that can take this offense over the top come playoff time. Mixon with a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Stroud looking to throw. That one complete. It's Tank Dell. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical it would be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Once again, they run with Mixon. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. There'll be some contact going on. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Stroud off the play fake. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Nixon diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. The Vikings offense making their way out behind their former number three overall pick, who spent his last year as a 49er. It's Sam Darnold. And he's still been looking for that one situation to allow all of his talents to come together. He's hoping that he found it here. Plenty of playmakers on the outside and a team that's willing to run the football to let his talent shine. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. And they'll send the slot in motion left. Play action, it's Darnold. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. Usually going to pick up a holding call. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Back to throw, Darnold. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. They'll get a couple yards back, but not more than that. They'll be left with 12 yards to go on third down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Now Darnold. A quick throw there is incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. Back deep is Steven Sims. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. Now call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Texans will take over.
Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. The ball gets bumped up. It's now second and four after the penalty. There's Stephon Diggs for the catch on the slam. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. With these run-pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. Stroud. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Jonathan Bullard. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Here's Stroud. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Throwing now is Stroud. Got his man, Dell. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Got the completion, but it certainly wasn't on his time frame. Hurried on that play. Absolutely. The pressure affected him. Unable to get it further downfield. On is the punter, Townsend, as he gets this one away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line. Second and a yard. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Darnold down to throw. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Jefferson has his first catch. He also has a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10.
A play fake, and it's Darnold. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Here's second and ten. Here's Darnold. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Darnold from the gun. He'll drop this underneath for Jones. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. Oh, look at the juke. That's some good hard running there as he'll push his way forward for about five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. From the 48-yard line, here's second and five. Again, it's Jones. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 38-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That tackle behind the line made by Will Anderson. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front, so when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive, but right now they need five yards on this third down try. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. They converted twice on third down that drive already, but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt? Oh, 
And this one is right down the middle. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, and then both sides gain something out of that drive. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Houston set to take over. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Stroud sets up the play action. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Now Stroud. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that you can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. Now that's absolutely frustrating for a defender. Had a chance to get him on the ground before he got to the sideline, but what great vision and understanding where he is on the field as he headed for the marker and picked up the first down. And Stroud now to throw. That's caught again by Schultz. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and three. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. But he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. Stroud to throw it. Throw over the middle is taken in by Dell. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Play action. Stroud now. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Sacked by Andrew Van Ginkle. The drive had started well after a punt last time. Now it's slowed down a bit, and let's face it, they don't want to punt the ball back-to-back -back series. They want a sustained drive on this one. Stroud looking to throw. 
And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Defensively, Jimmy Ward in on the stop. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Play action. It's Darnold. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back in his own three-yard line. Full of run show, Fadakasi gets him for a loss of eight. What great push up front. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 16. On the give, this is their fullback. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. I'm not sure how much I really love that call. It almost seems like a little bit of a give up there. But maybe what they were thinking is, we've got a chance to pop one. They think we're just going to give up here, hand it to the big man, and maybe he can get through. Sometimes there's a little bit of courage in play calling that maybe we don't give enough credit. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Play action. Here's Stroud. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. So first and 10 now from the 30. Mixing up the middle. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. And a nice strong run there by Mixon. And the Texans, they decided a year ago after ranking 28th in rushing offense that they needed Joe Mixon. He's coming off another impressive season in Cincinnati where he surpassed 1,400 all-purpose yards, and he will be the lead runner for this Texans team. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. Second and 10. Stroud off the play fake. Wide open receiver complete. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line.
Stroud working out of the gun. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Harrison Smith on the safety blitz, able to get the sack. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense, so the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Stroud. Back of the end zone. Can he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. That was a difficult catch, and I admire the fact that he actually caught the football. Worked so hard to get his feet down inbounds. Tried to do the toe tap. Uh, my dad's in a... And now hold everything here as the challenge flag is out. And we're going to get a review of that last play. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. Shifty footwork gets him a little extra on the play. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Faking the give, Darnold. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Facing second and short, that gives you a chance to go for a bigger play through the air. But I think he said to himself, why don't I just handle this one? Get all the yards you needed and then some and made that snap a huge success. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Justin Jefferson bringing in the slam. 
And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 40. 12 yards there as they move the chains. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And showcasing those strong legs on that run, getting through one tackle, now she winds up getting eight there. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. From the 31, here's second and two. Now Darnold. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Darnold. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Well, they have certainly gotten him involved in this first half, and on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Back to throw, Darnold. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets it inside the ten to the nine. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. To throw is Darnold. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. To the air again, Darnold. His throw incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Darnold. And this is caught. Touchdown. Jordan Addison, 35 yards. And the Vikings have cut it back within a score. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot. Know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes it a 14-10 ball game. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And Jordan Addison capped it off with a touchdown catch. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. And then we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, Everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. 
He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Here's Stroud. Over the middle, he gets it to Collins. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Now Stroud. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. And Stroud now to throw. They'll set up the screen here to mix him. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. Here goes Stroud again. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Schultz. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Throwing now is Stroud. And that's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Now a second and ten. Stroud to throw it. He'll complete this one to Collins. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. The throwing again is Stroud. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. C.J. Stroud as the first half is winding down. And the Texans would extend their lead here just before halftime. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. It's good, and it's 21-10. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was C.J. Stroud who finished off that drive with a touchdown run. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. From the end zone, here comes Brandon Powell. 
And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he's going to lose yardage. Not that it matters as the final seconds tick away. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. So we have reached halftime here. It's the visitors, the Texans, out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Fairbairn now to kick this one away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And Charles, some things to like about that first half, ultimately trailing here, but certainly this deficit is manageable. So curious to see what adjustments they may have made at intermission. As am I, because I think things bode well for a possible comeback because I thought a lot of their best reps in the first half came through the passing game. They were hitting the open receivers, taking whatever the coverage gave them and making it work well for themselves. Now, they just want to pick up the pace of scoring a little bit. So I expect them to come out and continue to throw the ball effectively. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Off of play action, Darnold. And that is gonna be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Darnold. And that is incomplete. Well, if they have any designs on getting back into this football game in the second half, they're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were on this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. The Texans offense and C.J. Stroud getting ready for this next drive. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart, and that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Stroud looking to throw. Catch is made, it's Schultz on the out route. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, 
that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try to make some plays in their backfield. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. Inside handoff to Mixon. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. You got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Here is third down and four. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. Sheds off the tackle. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. And a big 32-yard play on third. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach. And that's a strong step towards getting it done. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. This is caught. And he's tapping a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. When he decided to run a hitch route, it really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. From the three, second and a yard. Stroud out of the gun here. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Dalton Schultz from three yards out. And the Texans are able to add on to that lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it was the tight end Dalton Schultz on the touchdown reception to cap the drive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're gonna try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. And now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Jones. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to the...
Blitz coming and down he goes. That's Aziz Al Shair getting through for the sack that time. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Now it's Darnold. This is caught by Addison. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 22 yards there, a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory. Down at the 33. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Snap will come from the 31 on second and seven. They'll go again to Jones. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. Now they got to get to the 23 here on third. Darnold now to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. Darnold from the gun. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And that's the kind of play this offense needs to maybe kick him into gear a little bit. They've been stuck in neutral much of the game. Perhaps that can give them a little bit of confidence that big plays are out there. Now Jones. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. It's second and goal. Back to the eight-yard line now. Now Darnold. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Five yards that time on the completion, and now it's third and goal. I think as he began this throw, you saw that the area was congested, but he has a lot of confidence in his arm, and he fits that one in there nicely. They pick up the catch, not much yardage afterwards. Jones. No gain on the play that time, so a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Yeah. 
And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. C.J. Stroud ready to lead the Texans on their next drive. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. It's a loss of four on the first down play. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside, and finished off the runner for a loss. Stroud. It's complete to Diggs. The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Back to Mixon on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Again, it's Mixon. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll wind up as a loss on the play, so now they're staring at a third down and 12. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 38-yard line. Three quarters in the books. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 38. A handoff to Mixon to the 36-yard line. Stop there. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. From the 36, Stroud. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But they certainly did a nice job there picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. In search of eight yards on third down, they've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Operating from the gun, Stroud, and Diggs has it. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them?
To the right side and caught by Dell. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. From the 24 now, here's a second down and nine. Here's Stroud. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards at a first. Looking to throw, Stroud. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Stephon Diggs, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, fantastic. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And they have had problems getting the running game in gear as we look through some of their attempts from earlier. They have just not been able to match the physicality that this defense has shown, and their lack of success on the ground is a direct reflection of that. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. From the 33, here's second down and five. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So they'll accept that penalty, and that'll, of course, move the football up the field. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Back to throw, Darnold. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. 
Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The play fake, and it's Darnold. Open man, he's got Jefferson across the formation. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, they certainly not shied away from throwing the footballs. They've leaned on their quarterback to start this game. Four straight passes right out of the gate, with that last one earning them a new set of downs. They'll try and run it in with Jones. Into a mass of bodies, and I think they held him out. They did. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Jones again. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Aaron Jones punching it in from a yard away. And the Vikings have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. No success on first down. He couldn't get any yardage. They give it to him again, and he finds the end zone. Sometimes it just has to be persistence, doesn't it? And you know who else helps with that? Offensive line. After a team's been stuffed, the last thing they want to do is go to a different play call. They want to come back and do it again and show that they can dominate the line of scrimmage. And he is not going to get in here. So the decision to go for two does not pay off as they're unable to cut any further into their deficit. Well, partner, since this new two-point rule came into play, offenses spend a lot more time working on it. That means the defenses are doing the exact same thing. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Texans offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him diagnose a play and then go make it and finish it that's when the great ones know that they have the goods that's complete to Dell and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 the catch and run there good for 16 and a first quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage 
Mixon with a first down carry. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And the Vikings pick up the football. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And yeah, now that door ajar, two-score game, so hold on here, not done in the fourth. And now out comes Minnesota. And they trail by two scores in the fourth, and their defense did its job getting the fumble recovery. And time to see what this offense has left in the tank. So following the fumble recovery, here's Darnold setting up the screen here. Aaron Jones, no gain on the screen there at second down. So many screen passes are the result of excellent acting by everyone. But sometimes the guy who's getting the ball tips the play off. <laughs> you know, the running back, because he's, he's eager to get the pass. And sometimes he doesn't act very well about whether he's going to block or leak out or whatever. And I think that they saw that, and that's why they're able to get to him on it. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that'll send them back to the drawing board. The Vikings on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and ten. To throw is Darnold. That is caught, and he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Second down and four. To the air again, Darnold. Over the middle, it's complete. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Now first and goal. Here's Darnold. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. Yeah, a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it third and goal now as they try to punch in a late touchdown. Here's Darnold. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Yeah. 
Here it is. Fourth and goal. Fourth down, and for Darnold, it's desperation time. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. They wanted to throw for it. A surprise does not work on fourth and goal from the one. And this Texans defense comes up with a goal line stand. The Texans getting set here to take over again on offense. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. And he's got Rome. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with a minute 15 left to go in the second half. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Stroud to throw it. He's got his target. That's complete. And even though he gets out of bounds to stop the clock, it's not going to matter. That first down going to be enough to write a finish to this one. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So this one in the win column for the Texans, and it was thanks in large part to the play of their second-year quarterback. Yeah, he did a little bit of everything, didn't he? He had two touchdown passes through the air, another one on the ground, and that defense, they really had no answer for many of their drives.